Welcome back to stage three of the Mirage GT build video series. In this video, we're going to be installing our wheel arch mounting panels and body supports. This includes both of our front and rear wheel arch mounting panels, our two front wing support rails and our two engine bay panels. We're also going to be installing our water expansion tank and pipework, washer bottle and air pipes. As usual, a full list of the torque settings for this video can be found on our website using the link in the description below. Now that our main body and mounting panels have been successfully fitted to our chassis, we're now ready to fit the wheel arch mounting panels and body support ceiling panels. We're going to start by fitting our rear wheel arch mounting panels first, and in preparation for this, we've raised the chassis on support jacks and removed each of our four wheels, which will allow us better access to each of these areas of our chassis. Each of our rear wheel arches consists of five panels, which include the two main front and rear mounting panels, the blanking plate, and the two vertical inner front and rear panels. First up is our main front panel, and notice how the bottom section of this panel has been trimmed to fit into the side sill of our chassis. This panel should be positioned hard up against the body before measuring and marking for an additional cut to be made at the top of the panel, like so. Once our panel has been successfully trimmed and moved back into position, we can now go ahead and mark four drill points on the panel, which will be used to attach the panel to the bars of our chassis. We can now drill through the panel and into the chassis bar itself, before securing the panel in place with the four self-tapping screws provided. Moving on to the main rear panel now, and once again it's advisable to clean the edges of this area with cellular thinners prior to fitting the panel itself. This panel will need to be held in position against the wheel arch of the body from behind whilst the first of these holes are drilled, so it's advisable to use an extra pair of hands here. With the bottom of the panel now secure, we can now mark and drill two additional holes in the top of the panel to further secure this main rear panel in place. We're going to use the same procedure here to secure both of our two vertical inner panels, each of which is held in position with an additional pair of self-tapping screws. We can now also secure these panels together with two additional screws at the point where both vertical inner panels overlap, like so. With both of our vertical inner panels now securely in place, we're going to tidy up the shape of our wheel arch to make it look presentable and remove any sharp edges. And after once again cleaning the entire area with cellular thinners, we can now begin to add sealant to these newly installed panels. With all of our panels now sealed, it's advisable to check this entire area over once again and gently smoothen the sealant to eradicate any remaining gaps and make the joints of each panel look as presentable as possible. Once complete, 
This entire process can now be repeated for the second rear wheel arch on the left hand side of our chassis. With all of the rear wheel arch mounting panels now fitted, we're now going to fit our two wing support rails. We start by attaching a bolt and washer to the front of our chassis before sliding the bottom end of our wing rail in place and loosely securing it with an additional washer and bolt. These bolts can be secured to a tight fit once both of our wing support rails have been fully installed. With the bottom end of our wing rail now in place, we now need to hold the wing rail in its final position, lifting the middle of the wing rail up slightly and mark the position of the top of the wing rail bracket onto the body mounting panel in preparation for drilling. We can now drill the two required bolt holes and secure the top of the wing rail in position with the nuts, bolts and washers provided. Once again, it's advisable to use an extra pair of hands at this stage. This process can also be repeated for the second of our wing support rails. With both of our wing support rails now in place, we're now going to fit our two side support ceiling panels. Once again, it's advisable to thoroughly prepare this area with cellular thinners before adding sealant to each of these side panels to secure them in place. Next up are the engine bay panels. The top of our engine bay panels will be connected to the chassis using the top bolts and washers provided. It's important to note that we're going to fit just two of the four bolts on the left hand engine bay panel for now, as the remaining two bolts will be used to secure our water expansion tank in the later stages of this video. The bottom of our engine bay panels will be connected using an additional self-tapping bolt screw which we can secure in place once we've marked and drilled its position on the chassis. It's now time to fit our front wheel arch mounting panels. Starting on the right hand side of our chassis, we're going to move the mounting panel into position before marking and drilling three holes in the base of our panel and chassis. We can now add three of the self-tapping bolt screws provided to secure this panel in place. With the base of this mounting panel now secure, we're going to add our sealant to bond the panel to the remainder of the body. And finally, we're going to mark and drill a further two holes in the top corner of the panel to further secure it in place. In order to keep the engine bay free of any sharp objects, we're going to screw these two self-tapping bolts into position from the rear of the panel, facing inwards towards the wheel arch, like so. Before we leave these front wheel arches to set and bond, it's advisable to adjust the curve of these mounting panels by adding some pressure to the center of the panel. This will help us achieve the optimum level of curve clearance once the bonding process has been completed. This process can now be repeated in full for the second of our front wheel arch mounting panels on the left hand side of the chassis, which comes pre-fitted with an air conditioning fresh air duct. With all of our mounting panels and body support ceiling panels now successfully installed on our chassis, it's now time to fit the water expansion tank. 
which will be secured to the chassis using the two remaining top bolts of our left hand engine bay panel. With the water tank now securely in place, we can now go ahead and connect it up to the engine. Both ends of our main water pipe can be secured in place using the pre-fitted Jubilee clips provided. Our two remaining water breather hoses can now also be connected up to the water expansion tank. We're going to take the shorter of these two hoses and connect it to the front bracket breather connection of our water expansion tank. This pipe will serve as our radiator hose breather and will be connected up to the radiator and can be secured in place using the Jubilee clips provided. The remaining longer water breather pipe will serve as our overflow pipe and once we've connected this to the top bracket overflow connection of our water expansion tank, we're going to feed this pipe down through to the underside of the chassis. Both of the radiator and overflow hoses can now be secured to our chassis using some additional cable ties. With the water expansion tank and pipework now successfully fitted, we're now ready to fit the washer bottle to the inner wing of our chassis. We start by applying a strip of masking tape to our left hand front wheel arch mounting panel, just below the fresh air duct. We can now attach the washer bottle to its bracket and temporarily move it into position against the wheel arch below the fresh air duct. We can now mark the position of the bracket onto the masking tape and drill two bolt holes through the fiberglass mounting panel, like so. With these bolt holes now successfully drilled, we can now secure the washer bottle bracket to the mounting panel. We're going to take two M6 bolts and washers and attach them to our bracket before attaching two additional penny washers and moving the bracket into position against the mounting panel. This bracket can now be secured in position on the reverse side of the mounting panel using two additional penny washers and nylocks. locks. Once we're happy with the position of the bracket, we can now connect the washer bottle to the wiring loom. Using the supplied electrical connector, be sure to connect the black negative wire to the bottom of the washer bottle connector and the grey positive wire to the top of the connector, like so. We can now move the washer bottle into its final position. We're now ready to fit the air pipes to the heater box and ducting vents. We start by attaching one of our hose clips to the smaller pipe before moving it into position onto the ducting vent and securing it tightly in position. This process can also be repeated for the second end on the opposite side of the chassis. The 
longer of our two air pipes can now also be fitted in the passenger footwell. With the longer air pipe now securely connected to the ducting vents, we're going to attach two P-clips to the chassis in order to hold the air pipe in its final position using two cable ties, like so. With both of these air pipes now fitted securely in place, we're now ready to move on to the next video.